Hello and welcome to the Building Blocks for Deep Learning, uh, where we go over different neural network layers and functions and show how and, and why they are used. Um, today we're talking about categorical data, so it should be a shorter one than before. So categorical data is data that's non-numeric. So uh, an example of this might be a color or how happy you are today, like happy, sad, like or what's um, what emotional state you're in. Uh, these things don't necessarily have a, a, a numeric interpretation, and so we, we call them categorical. There's two types of categorical variables. Um, there's ordinal categorical variables and then non-ordinal categorical variables. If you're interested in learning more about this, I do have a video on it, so you can go check it out. Um, now, the problem with categorical data and how it was treated with previous machine learning algorithms before neural networks is the follows. Um, if you had lots of categorical data, so if you were in a linear model, so doing you know SVM or linear regression or something like that, and you had a high cardinality categorical variable, this is one, it's a categorical variable with lots of different categories. For example, zip code. Um, the problem was that, it, at least for linear models, you would need to make a feature for each different zip code and then also have a coefficient for each of those. So it would sort of blow up the feature space. Um, which made it really, really hard for these things to train. And so what people would do is they'd have uh, this sort of pre-processing beforehand um, to go ahead and make sure that there were a fewer number of categorical variables. Same with decision trees. Um, so gradient boosting or random forest. The problem is that there would be too many splits. Um, and because there would be so many splits, it, it would be very, very hard to, I mean, you, you would either always it were fit or it would be very, very hard to, to sort of get the, the intricacies of these variables. And so you have to do pre-processing before. Um, I think the sort of root of this problem is that some categorical variables are very similar to each other, and they should almost be treated similarly. So for example, zip codes that are in cities are pretty similar to each other, or zip codes that are nearby are, are really similar to each other. Um, so why were they treated as completely different categories? And unfortunately, these previous models would always treat them as different categories. Now, fortunately, with neural networks and embeddings, you don't need to treat them as entirely different categories. In fact, when you go ahead and train neural networks with these different categories, uh, you'll find that specific categories group together. Uh, and I do have a video on representational learning, which sort of goes over this. So uh, how do we use neural networks? How do we use embeddings with categorical data? That's basically what we're going to be uh, exploring today. And what are the general good rules of thumb? So it's pretty simple. So I'll go ahead and sort of bull rush forward. So uh, I go ahead, I start with a numeric data set. Um, because the, uh, the initial scikit-learn make classification, and if you want to learn more about that, I also have another video. Thanks, Nate, for the shameless uh, self-promotion. I'm always there for you guys. Um, so because this can only give us numeric features, I go ahead and I sort of manually make some non-numeric features. I use pdcut. Oh, there's, there's another video for that too. Oh, oh yes. Um, so if you're interested in learning about pandas, you can, you can figure that out. So I use pdcut to go ahead and do this. And you can at least look at these variables. Um, so initially we've got a couple of categories. The first five are categories. So it's 54, so it's category number 54, number 52, number 31, number 41, number 39. Now, for neural networks, uh, you're going to need to make the categories into, into just their numeric representation. Uh, so it's just a map from whatever the actual category was. So this might be a word like red to the number 54. So it needs to accept a number, um, but it doesn't really, it, I mean, and the number needs to go from zero to whatever the, the maximum number of categories it is. It doesn't matter which number it is. So just because 54 and 52 are close to each other numerically, it doesn't mean that these categories are going to be close to each other. Um, and it's based on the implementation of, in, of embeddings, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, and then the rest of the data set is numeric, so all these guys are numeric. Um, so I go ahead and I separate the features into numeric and categorical features. Um, and you'll, you'll need to do this for your data set beforehand. Okay, so now we can throw our data into a neural network, right? No, no, no. Remember, we need to go ahead and scale, standard scale our data. Now, uh, notice what I did here. I only scaled the numeric data. Um, the categorical data doesn't need to be standard scales. It doesn't need to be standardized. So that's, that's kind of nice. Um, so it means that you can sort of skip some steps on that, but you still need to standardize your numeric data. So I go ahead and standardize it here, and now we are ready. 
So in this case, I've got two different inputs and I need to have them in two different inputs into our tf.keras. So we've got numeric inputs, which has 20, and then we've got categorical inputs that have five. So I go ahead and I make these two inputs. Now, the categorical inputs need to be treated differently. And the way that they are treated differently is that they need to be thrown into an embedding layer first. Um, what does an embedding layer do? So an embedding layer, there's, there's a couple of things that it specifies. So to make an embedding layer, we need to know the number of categories in total. And we need to know the, the size that you want to represent each category as. So what embedding layers do, and you can get a lot more in that, in that previous video on, on representational learning, but I will give you the, the long and the short of it now. So what embedding layers do is they go ahead and they take each uh, categorical input and they map it into a vector of weights. That's it. Now, a vector of weights is nice because the neural network can go ahead and change them because they're weights. So it can learn what weights are appropriate there. So it can learn what vector best represents this category. So what series of series of numbers, five numbers, in this case, that are numeric, they can be you know, negative, they can be positive, they can be decimal numbers, what best represents this category? And the nice thing is that, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter if, if this category is represented as like a negative five, negative two, and negative one. But as long as categories that are similar to it are represented in a similar way, so maybe negative five, negative two, and negative two, um, right, then it, the neural network can express similarity of categories and therefore use its subsequent layers to treat these categories similarly, right? So we go ahead and we basically say, let's put, let's go ahead and, you know, figure out what, what numbers represent these categories. The categories that are similar should be represented by similar numbers. So layers later on can learn a single set of weights to go ahead and treat these categories. Um, and similar categories will be treated in a similar way. Um, so there is a sort of rule of thumb uh, that I've gone ahead and included here. This is the embedding size rule. This is technically, I just copied this from fast.ai, which is generally good for these empirical types of rules. Um, uh, but I, we don't need to talk anything more about it right now. Uh, and this will go ahead and tell you how many, what size of embedding you should use based on the number of categories that you have. Um, it's a good rule of thumb. You can just use it. It's, it's probably fine for most applications. Um, so I do a couple of things here to just go ahead and make this, uh, the embedding categories kind of fit. Uh, I flatten it. Um, not super important. If you want to learn more about that, I, I go ahead and I do uh, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, deep learning and, and Keras in a, in a subsequent video. Boy, is that like six references so far? God, so many videos that you need to watch. Um, so we've made our embedding layer, and this is basically all there is to it. Um, you guys, if you watched the previous video in this series, which you should sort of see in the play bar uh, or in the, in the playlist side, um, you'll actually know what happens next. One might guess. There's three steps. So standardize, regularize, linear regression, aka dense. So we go ahead, we do one thing, we, cat we concatenate the categorical inputs together, we regularize, we do dense. Because remember, we standardized before this, uh, and uh, the initial categorical input doesn't need to be standardized. And then I use the exact same neural network as I did before. So there's really nothing complex about it. Um, let me make sure to go ahead and run these things. So if you want to learn more about this one, this neural network and why it's sort of structured this way, please watch the previous one. We, we go over this uh, in quite some detail. So that is the tabular uh, data. Again, we're doing the same problem, binary cross entropy, RMS prop. Um, so we go ahead and we run this here and then we can check out our model.summary. Um, so our model.summary is, oh, well, that's kind of nasty uh, that it does this kind of like little bit of, of trimming here. Sorry, it's, I'm not used to working in such a blown out uh, or in such a sort of big uh, fonted notebook. Um, so again, we've got lots of layers. You can, you can kind of look at these. Um, yeah, uh, the thing that I always check out here is down here. We check out the total number of parameters and we notice the total number of parameters is up. Because again, we, we represent each of our categories with, with, um, with trainable parameters. So in that case, we've got, what, uh, 100 categories and then five for each. So, you know, 500. Um, and each of those will be represented in the input layer. Um, this is also where the bootstrap sample generator becomes really, really nice. Um, so because we're using a fit generator, we can really easily have uh, numeric inputs and categorical inputs. 
And Keras makes it really nice for this. So I really like this actually. Um, so I go ahead and I do this. If you want to check this out on how you input this data in, it's pretty cool. And then we can go ahead and start fitting. And that's it. Uh, really, really, this lesson was sort of more about like, how do you use a, an embedding layer? What does it do under the hood? Uh, and when should you use it? Uh, for a neural network, you should basically just always use it. Um, you can be lazy and with categorical inputs that are really, really small, like maybe two, three, or four, you can treat them the exact same way that you treat them in linear regression. We actually get higher accuracy than we did in the previous example. Um, so hopefully that was pretty informative for what you need to do in order to use categorical data with neural networks. Um, and the real, if there's anything sort of clutch here, it's sort of looking at this slide here. So if you if you go ahead and sort of understand what's going on in this in this sort of one uh, cell of the neural network, you'll understand what you'll need to do for categories. I hope this was interesting and I hope you liked it. Please leave comments or likes below. Otherwise, check out the next video where we get into even more complex neural networks. Thanks.